I will briefly introduce the hydro picking tool. And uh, afterwards, Isabel will explain how we have applied it in, um, uh, in the Iberian Peninsula. This hydro picking impact assessment tool uh, is made for developing um, <clears throat> there or looking into the consequences of rapid changes in, in water level and water flow. Uh, so what is actually hydro peaking? Yes, it is actually rapid changes that are not natural um, that could be uh, happening due to hydropower operations, most of the time for load following, for, for <clears throat> backing up when the power prices are high or low, etc. So what are we talking about to characterize hydro peaking? We have to look at uh, the ratio between the high and low flow. We have to look at the, the time it takes uh, to uh, ramp up or ramp down. We have to look at the duration, how long does an event last, and the frequency, how often does it happen. This is something that we actually can characterize, and this is what we have done with the hydro peaking tool. And I have to emphasize that the starting point of this is a hydropower regulated river without peaking. We're not comparing to natural conditions. We are comparing to to the peaking, uh, sorry, the natural or the, the uh, uh, operation of hydropower plants that follows more or less the natural variations. So what do we do then? We have to combine uh, the effect, how strong is the addition, additional effect of the hydromorphological changes uh, due to this peaking operation. We have to combine that with the vulnerability of the fish population to assess how strong impact this has on fish. We have to also have some data on the fish population. This we had already done before we started Fit Hydro in a Norwegian project and applied it for Atlantic salmon. Uh, what we did then was to, uh, in Fit Hydro, was to try to adapt it also to grayling and Iberian sarpenids. And that's what you're going to hear from Isabel in, in a minute, how we did that. Just to focus, the tool is meant to be used on an overview level, but also on a detailed level. That's up to you. You have to have some data that has to be flow records, and you have to assess that. That could be done through a tool we have developed that's called Kosh tool. Uh, you will probably have to do some field measurements to get the structure of the river, which can again be used to, as input to a habitat model, a detailed or less detailed. That's up to you, up to the user. And you need, of course, some information on the fish population data. Uh, this is treated in the hydro picking tool. You will have uh, information on the rate of change, uh, frequency, and so on of flow changes of the habitats and of the fish population vulnerability. And this is combined into a combined assessment where you can classify the picking operation into uh, very high impact towards low impact. And the idea, of course, is that this can be used to help uh, decide mitigation measures to go from the, let's call it the red squares here, uh, towards the green squares. And with that, I will hand over to Isabel Boavida, also from the University of Technical University of Lisbon, to uh, actually show us how, <clears throat> how this has been applied in um, Iberian Peninsula. So please, Isabel. Thank you, good afternoon to all. Let's see, I hope everyone is looking at my screen. Okay, so the, we first, before applied to a Bragado case study, we did, uh, we kind of adapt the, the impact assessment tool for the Iberian Cyprinids. Um, so we used uh, existing literature and expect knowledge, but we decided to focus mostly on uh, Cyprinids, native Cyprinids that inhabit in the northern part of the Iberian Peninsula. Also, because it's here, there are more concentrated the hydro picking. I mean, I mean the, the higher dams that can uh, promote the hydro picking downstream hydropower plants. First of all, we have proposed, uh, me and my colleague from uh, Hydroerg, Francisco Dingo, we had proposed the first draft of parameters, which were associated associated uh, for the effect and vulnerability factors. It was mostly uh, the same uh, factors, a slightly change uh, between uh, what was done previously uh, uh, for the Norwegian project. Uh, then when we had this first draft, we shared with eight expert freshwater ecologists, both from Portugal and Spain, to get their feedback from, uh, from our first draft. 
Wrapping up their comments, um, we came out to five effect factors, which are mostly the same that were used before in Norway. But uh, here we have developed the different um, levels of impact. Uh, in Norway, they had four different levels. For the Iberian police, we decided of three different levels. And also the ranges were different, of course, because we are always talking about the different systems and different rivers that we have in Southern Europe than comparing with the ones that exist in Northern Europe. We came out also uh, with vulnerability factors. Uh, we decided to develop two different um, uh, factors for the population size regarding first the native barbel, the Lucia barbus vocagil, and uh, another one for the small native cyprinids. Uh, the other vulnerability factors are slightly different than the one that were previously uh, developed for Norway and that uh, we agreed uh, that were most important for the, the river systems that we have in uh, the Iberian Peninsula. Then we use it uh, to our test cases was in Bragado. This test case is located in northern Portugal in a rural area. It's a really small hydropower scheme. Uh, that operates with the two cubic meters per second of turbine discharges. Um, and it also operates with hydro peaking, it has a, a small weird, and then the water is uh, conducted to the, to the turbine. So the effect factors, to calculate them, we first use the ECRAS 2D model to, to model our uh, river downstream, the power plant, we model around 150 meters uh, river length. Um, and this was done mostly to calculate first the dewater area, which is the difference between the, the, water the wetted area between the peak flow and the base flow. We also use it to have uh, the value of the, the water, the water eight downstream the hydropower plant. Then we use the Koshtul uh, software, which was also developed in, in Sintef. This uh, Koshtul, uh, it gives us the statistics of uh, the, the water discharge and the water aid downstream the hydropower plant. And from here, we can uh, take out the important effect factors. We are talking here about the rate of change, which is the rate that uh, the water increases and decreases in the, in the river and uh, the frequency that we have these peaks. We also could uh, extract from the cost to the distribution and the timing when the hydro peaking occurs. It means during uh, a week or during a month, but also in the day. Then we came out to this uh, finally effect factors regarding this case study. So here you have the values for the five different effect factors in our characterization. If it was a large impact, a moderate, or in this case, we don't have a low uh, impact. We then compute all the effect factors. The, the first and the second were multiply and all the three others were summed. And we reached to a final value of 15, which uh, it comes out as a large impact according to the combined effect table that you can see at the bottom. Then the vulnerability factors, this was more difficult to, to get because there is very little information. So we based first in our expert judgment from all the works we did the, in the Bragado case study, which also include telemetry studies um, and uh, fish samplings. So here you have some of the fish species that we could find in the Bragado uh, test cases. And we came out to this final table of the vulnerability factors. So there were no barbel at uh, our case study. We only had the fish species that you just saw before. And this is our characterization regarding the impact or the, sorry, the vulnerability of this river stretch. So as you can see, it was mostly low and moderate. So the values one and two. When we did the combined effect, we just sum the four vulnerability factors because the first one you applied either if you have the barbel or if you have the other native, small native cyprinids. And we came out to a number, a final value of 5.5 which corresponds to a low impact. Then with the both uh, classes and the both uh, values, we all did an overall assessment regarding the same table that Atali just saw previously. And we, we get to the final value of low, uh, sorry, moderate impact. So we have the, the effect value, it was large, 
regarding the, the effect of hydro picking, but the vulnerability was low. So in the end, we get to a moderate uh, impact of uh, hydro picking in Bragado uh, test cases. And, um, and that's all. I hope I was on time. Thank okay. you to all, and thank you to Hydroerg for also the support, <laughs> which is the owner of the hydropower company.